to Totalus Rankium. This week, Caligula. Hello and welcome to Roman Emperor's Totalus Rankium. Ranking all of the Roman emperors from Augustus to Augustulus. Totalisly, yeah. Yes, that's what we're doing. Um, oh, I, do, do you know what? I'll, I'm going to start by saying I was quite excited about this episode. Just You've been very mysterious about it. Um, and when you said the word mental, that made me quite excited. <laughs> yeah, I try not to give anything away to Jamie during the week whilst I'm doing my research, but I did occasionally have to send the odd text message saying Caligula is crazy. But... I've not given anything away, have no, I? No, no, no. Right, before we get on to Caligula, though, something a listener pointed out is that we have not actually totaled up the scores for the Emperors. We've been no. forgetting to mention that. So, just yes. to keep everyone up to date, Augustus scored a total of 48.25. Ah. And Tiberius scored a lower score of 36.88. And if you look on our website and our Facebook page, we make like top trump style cards for each one and we put them up on the website yeah it's very exciting it is it is right okay so let's go third emperor yeah caligula Ooh. right if you remember last week i did yes. some scientific research didn't i <laughs> about Google. tiberius looking yeah. at top 10 worst emperors and tiberius was like fifth eighth seventh et cetera, yeah etc and it right. surprised me to start with he was on the list but it became very clear why he was <laughs> well i decided to do the same this week do you want to hazard a guess where caligula is oh i'm get. Well, from the hinting, well, just, just from the suggestion, I'm guessing kind of near the within the top three. So, basing this on the first five lists I looked at, yeah. he was first, 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 and first. Okay, so <laughs> he's a bit mental. <laughs> yeah. Now, however, is this Julio-Claudian bias? I hear you ask. Yes. <laughs> it, is this judo, judo Claude did? Is it bias? It is. <laughs> Historical bias? <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, this is the question. The first Roman emperors, the ones part of the Julio Claudian yeah. dynasty, are definitely the most well known. So is it just that Caligula was mm. not a good emperor, but was it not a good emperor as part of this first group? We'll, well, we're going to find out because well, we're yeah. going to go through all of them. So we'll see if anyone matches up to Caligula as we go on. Ooh. But we are here, like, prejudging him, and we've it's not even gone through him. So let's, this is just pure prejudice. Let's, let's, let's drop that now. Yeah, so let's clear our minds of that first, first, first. Poor first. innocent Caligula. What did he do? He might, he might be misunderstood. So let's start. He was born on the 31st of August, 12 CE. His name was Gaius Julius Caesar. Again. Yeah, yeah, another guy, Julius Caesar. At the time, all through his life, he was just called Gaius. All the Romans thought of him as Emperor Gaius. It's only later on that we call him Caligula, just to... So it's more of a contemporary sort of name. Um, well, it was a contemporary nickname, as I mentioned last right. week, because it meant Little Boot when he was dressed oh, up yeah. as a soldier. Mm. Um, but he didn't like the nickname, so no one called him Emperor <laughs> Caligula. Obviously, you don't want to be calling him Emperor Little Boots, I... especially when he, he could do the things he could do. We'll get on to that. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. But well. <laughs> we're going to start off um, with family tree time. Yay! So we... We're going to start a new one, because oh, that okay. old one's a bit crowded. I was thinking, what mm. we'll do... Once we get to the end of this dynasty, I'll scan them in and mm. digitally put them together to make That's one nice big Julio-Claudian family you know, tree. I'm thinking at some point I'm going to need two separate books, like a one for the, my own little notes and then one for timelines. Oh, maybe. Or family trees. Yeah, maybe you will. Yeah. Maybe you need a separate piece of paper. Maybe this is something we should have discussed before recording. Yeah, just think the audience probably sitting there going, what? Why haven't you sorted this out yeah. already? <laughs> I feel you especially all you professionals. Right, well, anyway, Sorry, guys. for now... Just, just do it on that page, yeah. so that's fine. Right, we're going to start off with Germanicus on this one. Do you remember who Germanicus was? Okay, uh, yes, that rings a lot of bells. Uh, he, he was called that because he was very successful. Uh, conquered the Germans. Well, it was actually his father, so he oh. got called that because his father died. Oh, but okay. Germanicus, um, yes, he's conqueror of the Germans. He was the superhero rock star. Yes, he's a star, wasn't he? And yeah. he married Agrippine, Agrippina. Brilliant. So on Agrippa's your f- daughter. On your first names for the new family tree then right put germanicus at the top and you remembered that he married agrippina so those are our first two. Ah, all very nice and don't forget germanicus also had claudius as a brother he was the one who was a bit slow and had a pet rock 
Oh yes, I, I remember him. We've been having fun with that rock, haven't we? We have. If you've not seen our website, there was a picture of a pet rock on there now. Oh, yeah, it's got a leash as well. He's got a leash, rock on a leash. So put Claudius on with his, his rock on a leash. Right, so Germanicus and Agrippina have nine children, which I mentioned last week, but you'll be pleased to know that only five survived past childhood. Only, oh, okay. Yes. So there are nine children, only five. Only five, five survived, so we that's only quite, to... That's quite common, though. Like... It was common back then. It was uh, infant mortality in all ancient world was, was high. So we only need to look at five children. So these are the five children. You had two elder brothers, Nero and Drusus. Again, we've got similar names, so we're going to come up with nicknames for Nero and Drusus. Nero and Drusus, okay. What, what should we call them? Um, Drew, Drew Dog? Drudy? Drudy. Drudy. Drudus. Drudus. Drudy. <laughs> Drew Dog. Oh, I like Drew Dog. D Dog. D Dog. Okay. We've Double got D. D Dog, and we need <laughs> one for the, the son Nero. It's a coffee shop, isn't it? It's going to coffee then. Let's come latte. Like latte. Latte. Okay, so Drew Dog and Latte. We don't need to worry about them too much, as you no. will find out later on. So, oh dear. we've got Drew Dog and Latte, the two older brothers, and then we have got Caligula. And that's the son, isn't it? Yeah, son uh, of Germanicus. He was the youngest brother. Okay. And then after Caligula, you then had three sisters. You had Agrippina the Younger, so another Agrippina. Oh, another one. Yeah, because yeah, they like sharing the names, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> historians remember her as Agrippina the Younger, and we're going to carry on calling her Agrippina the Younger. We won't give her a nickname for reasons you'll find out. <laughs> she'll, she'll stay around for a bit. So ominous. <laughs> and then we had Drusilla. Is that a girl? For yeah. Dr- 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 D Dog. It's like D Dog's equivalent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, Drusilla. Feminine version of Drusus, and then La Villa. That's I'm counting six now. Oh yeah, sorry, I had six, isn't it? I don't know why I put five earlier. Oh yeah, yeah it's because I've put siblings, five siblings to that. Ah, six that children in total. Sense. That would be why. Right, so and then we've got La Villa at the end. So that's the nice little family. Oh, and everything went well. Yeah. The end. So the only other people that we need to worry about this week is um, if you remember last week, Tiberius had a son called Drusus, who yes. we called Drusus the son. Yes. So we do need to keep remembering about him. So put him on the new family tree, but just keep him separate. So he would be... So just on his own, Drusus the son. Drusus the son, thank you. Yeah. And he was married to, and I only mentioned her briefly, but she he was married to... Lavilia? Lavilia, yes, that's right. And who did Lavilia have an affair with? Um, she had an affair with, oh, Sejanus. Sejanus, he was the one who was trying to overtake everyone and then Tiberius yes. got rid of him. Oh, in a beautiful way. In that brilliant way. Poetry in motion. Right, so, Lavilia has a child, and we don't really know who was the father. It was either Sejanus or it was Drusus' the son. And the child is called Gemellus. Gemellus? Gemellus, which means twin. There were two of them, one of them died. Um, shall I put her on? So, yeah, put Gemellus on. It's a boy. So that is either the son of Drusus' son, so Tiberius' grandson, or the son of Sejanus. We don't really know which one. Could be one of the two. Okay, so that's that's it for the family tree for this week. Okay. So That's we'll... not too bad. I can cope with that. Yeah. So we've got Germanicus married to Agrippa with their six children that survived past childhood. Um, um, Germanicus has obviously got his brother Claudius with his pet Rock. And I've got Drasus, the son, married to Lavilia with their son Gemellius. Who might be Sir Janus's son. Right, so like let's go through the life and times of little Gaius Caligula. So at the age of two or three, little Gaius travelled with his father into Germany on campaign. Oh, that's yeah. quite nice, like family outing. Yeah, it was. It was family outing. No, that had never really been done before, but Germanicus said, Come along to the family. We're going to slaughter some barbarians. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sunday, like, I have a picnic. Yeah. Slice an arm off. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, as I've said, they used to dress him up as a little soldier, and that's how he got his little boots or bootykins nickname. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And as I said, he didn't like that nickname when he grew up, so people stopped calling it him very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Excellent. So then he went east to Syria with his father. Again, last week, if you remember, Germanicus was sent to the east. Yes. But he refused to go, didn't he? No, no, that was Tiberius. Ah. Um, When Germanicus was sent to the east, he did go. Mm. But Piso was sent with him. Piso was stopping him from doing all the stuff he needed to do. Power control, wasn't it? There was a power struggle. Then Germanicus, Caligula's dad, suddenly becomes very ill. Ah, yes. And dies. And we have no idea how that could have happened. No, apart from that, Germanicus said, 
Pizzo did it. Pizzo did it. I'm yeah. dying. Pizzo did it. Yeah, and that yeah. little bottle of poison next to his bed. Yeah. With Pizzo's name on the side. Yeah. If found, please return to Pizzo. <laughs> Clear box. <laughs> yeah. Italy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Germanicus dies, and then Agrippina and her children then mm. run back to Rome. Obviously a little bit distraught and upset. Oh, yeah, of course. Cool. So this is the first horrible thing that happens to Caligula and in as his we, life. And as we know, like, you know, people that have nice... You know, really bad events in their past usually end up being nice and yeah, they usually grow up well balanced individuals yeah, yeah. when they have traumatic childhoods. No therapy needed for him. No, so when they get back to Rome, there's the trial of Piso, where <laughs> Piso, remember, um, commits suicide inverted commas. Yeah, yes. That's when he tragically brutally stabbed himself. While Kemi's hair. Yeah. Um, so during the trial, Caligula lives with his mum, Agrippina, and the whole family together. So at this time, Agrippina asks Tiberius to remarry, but Tiberius says no because he's worried that the new husband could become a rival. Yeah, Political uh, factions are starting to grow. Yeah. So in 29 CE, Caligula's mother and two brothers are exiled on charges of treason. Ooh. So that is Latte and Drew Dog. Yeah. Are sent off as are as is Agrippina. Oh wow. Because Tiberius is really worried that people who love Germanicus so much will follow Germanicus's yeah. family. And he's worried there's going to be an uprising and he'll lose his head. Uh, oh, yeah, because I, I was going to say, like he was, he didn't seem the most eager to be emperor, but he no. obviously doesn't want to die. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't... Most people don't. Yeah, he, he didn't want to be emperor, but at the same time, he didn't want people to take it away from him because it's very hard to retire from being an emperor. <laughs> Yeah, there's two ways of going, I'm Death. Guessing. Although someone does do it, but that's yeah. for about two years' time. Um, <laughs> Emperor right. 82. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so at this time, Caligula is sent to live with his great-grandmother, Livia. Livia's still knocking around at this point. That's Augustus' ah. wife. Yeah. She's still alive. Um, but not for long. She then dies very soon afterwards. Aww. So then Caligula is sent Sad. to live with his grandmother, Antonia. And he's there for a short while. He's not, at this point in time, very happy. Understandably, his He's older not. brothers have disappeared. Yeah. His mother's disappeared, so it's just him and his three younger sisters. Apparently, he becomes very close with his sisters at this point. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. He became very close with his sisters at he this point. He got to know them quite well, we feel. Yes. Okay. There's um, no actual evidence for this but why would there be? But there is a lot of hearsay, <laughs> yeah. especially from Suetonius, who, who just loved that kind Ooh. of thing. So, um, Ooh, dear. yeah, there is one story at this point. Antonia finds um, Caligula and Drusilla, shall we say, intimate. Intimate, maybe having a bit of a hug. Yeah, peck on the cheek, that kind yeah. of thing. So um, at this point, Latte, yeah. the brother, is forced to commit suicide. Nero dies. Yeah, yeah, so Nero's dead. Oh. So I'm guessing so, this isn't the Nero. <laughs> no, no. Elder brother is now dead. He is forced to commit suicide in a prison cell. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's quite gruesome. He's given no choice to kill himself. Yeah. Caligula, understandably, not happy about this. So, he's, he's just surrounded by death at the moment, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, again, movement. it's not a happy childhood for Caligula. No. Then in 31 CE, he was then sent to live with Tiberius on Capri, if you remember last week. Yes, I remember um, that. Last week you asked how old he was, and I got it completely wrong, but then I edited out the episode so I didn't look stupid. Was it 17 or something? It was... I thought it was younger than that last week, but he was actually 18 when he moved there. Which, this is the same year that Sir Janus is um, killed off in that great way. Oh, yeah. So I couldn't quite find out whether Caligula went there before Sir Janus was killed mm. off or afterwards, whether the two were linked, but it happened around the same time. Mm -hmm. Everyone thought he was going to be dead within days. Everyone thought that was Tiberius. Bring him over so he could chuck him off the cliff. Yeah. But, according to some sources, Caligula was a very gifted actor and a dancer and a singer. He loved all that kind of stuff. Right. And he realised the dangers and played the role of the doting grandson so well that Tiberius kind of let him live. That's quite nice. Yeah. Ooh, that's clever. So he's manipulating already. Well, he, that, arguably he is. Yeah. Someone... But, I, I've not written it down here. But there's a very famous quote, I'm going to have to paraphrase because I can't remember it. But there was um, no better slave and no worse master. So he was really good at working under people, but when he became the master, he was awful. <laughs> so when he was with Tiberius, following Tiberius' orders, apparently he was brilliant. 
Mm. But was that just self-preservation? He's got to be brilliant, otherwise Tiberius will kill him. He knows that because he's already killed his older brother and his dad. Good Lord. Yeah, so he's not going to be having a happy time. However, it's not all doom and gloom for him at this point. Apparently, according to Suetonius, he would frequent taverns and brothels disguised in a periwig and long coat. He was passionately fond of the theatrical arts of singing, to which he gave much study. So if he survived the day without being chucked off a cliff, yeah. he'd then go down to the pub and have a few drinks and uh, get to know some individuals in the brothel. And Yeah. Well, to be fair, if I thought I was going to die on a side, I'd probably be doing the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. Dressing up like Columbo and chilling out. Yeah, the long coat, I do think of a big, dirty Mac. Yeah. I'm not sure they had those in Sitting Roman in times. Oh, he must have had one there. But maybe he was the first. Well, yeah, yeah got to start somewhere. Caligula, Columbo. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. And he's a bit mental. Yeah. I'm seeing a link. I'm seeing a link. You heard it here first. Yeah. So, during this time, Caligula in later life said that he used to stand over the body of Tiberius when he was sleeping, holding a dagger in his hand while the old man slept. But he heard the voice of Augustus telling him to wait for Tiberius to die naturally. Now, that to me sounds a little bit fantastical to make himself sound... Yeah, I think this is a case of after Tiberius died and everyone went, oh, we hated him. He started saying, oh, yeah, I hated him too because I used to... I almost killed him. Mm. I almost did. But who knows? Maybe he did. I, I've just got this image of him standing there literally all night with a knife over Tiberius and then Tiberius waking up and him suddenly whipping his hand behind his back going, mm. oh... Uh, Start a cup of tea? Yeah. Or no. the equivalent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> So that's a really scary image, actually. Just a pale face, just staring. Well, it is it's... all evening. That's yeah, yeah. That's chilling. It's chilling. But this is a story Caligula would tell people. So it really enhances his reputation, I guess. Yeah. Right. At this point, Drew Dog is starved to death in his cell. So, oh. Yeah. So that's his other brother, Deft. Apparently, he clung on to life for so long he started eating his mattress in an attempt to stay alive, which was stuffed with straw. But eventually he died. He was just slowly starved to death. Yeah, no, so that's, value. that's no, no, it's, it's not good. Hey, he's not a horse. He's not. Do you know he wasn't a horse? By that point, who knows? He'd suffered a lot. <laughs> also, <laughs> his mother was flogged so heavily that she lost an eye. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and then was left bleeding and injured, and then they stopped feeding her, so she wasted away and also died. So that is now mum, dad, and two brothers killed by Tiberius, or on Tiberius's orders, and Caligula's still living in that house. That's going to be a bit of, again, like earlier, that's going to be a very awkward lunch. <laughs> very awkward meal times. Yeah. How's your mother? Oh no, I'm sorry, I had her beaten so much her eye came out. Here it is. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so you can only begin to imagine what Caligula's state of mind was Good at Lord. this point. But Caligula himself was at this point giving a, a quaestorship, so that is a low-level yeah. political position. That shows he's being primed for power. Yeah, interested. Caligula then gets married. <gasps> yeah, ma. Oh, yeah, but then she died. Oh my goodness. With the child. Oh. oh. So that's now wife and child dead. Oh, so he, he marries somebody. I'm guessing they knew each other for a while. Um, I they managed find... to conceive. Well, yeah, long enough to, <laughs> to conceive, obviously, but I couldn't find out exactly how well or where they knew each other from, but they weren't married for long. Uh, whether this was Tiberius putting them together or anything else. I didn't find anything to indicate that it was a, a love-filled marriage, though. No. So it seems more of one of convenience, but still, it's going to be traumatic. Your wife and your child's died yes. around the same time as your brother and your mother, and not long after your other brother, and not long after your father. That uh, at this point, right now, I'm feeling very sorry for Caligula. Remember, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I feel very sorry for him. Just, just wait. <laughs> right. Okay. Then this is one of the most interesting things I found out. Mm. And we might come back to this later. Explain why I find this interesting. That's a little light bulb. He started to have an affair with Macro's wife. Do you remember who Macro was from last week? <gasps> I know it's a shop where you can buy lots of big budget <laughs> things. Do you remember the letter that got sent off? 
Oh, was he the guy that read it out? Or He was the one who delivered the letter did, yes. and then rounded up all the troops and then was given Sejanus' job afterwards. So Macro is now the head of the Praetorian Guard. Oh, yes, he's the, there. Um, Augustus set them up, didn't he, to sort of be his bodyguard. Then they became sort of a martial law. That's it, yes. yes. So, and then Sejanus was in charge uh, when Tiberius was around until Tiberius killed Sejanus and now Macro's in charge. Yeah, so he's so, now... Sleeping with Macro's wife, who's in charge of a mini army. Yeah, now this oh. this is the clever bit. Caligula uses Macro's wife to put in a good word with Macro, so then Macro and Caligula become good friends. Oh, so then nice. Macro puts in good words with Tiberius to boost his esteem in Tiberius's eyes. It's very political, isn't he? That yeah, like I say, I find that fascinating. That shows some political smarts right there and some ruthlessness. It's almost like he had the affair just for that. Mm, yeah, I, 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 wow. I think so. And this is not long after. This is all around the same time as all that death is happening. So that, yeah. is he really distraught or is he just carrying on? You do get the sense that there could be just a really cold-hearted person or scheming. Just, he's here. just numb from all or the Or maybe he's pain. just numb. So wow. this works so well that in 35 CE, Tiberius names his heirs. And he names joint heirs, Caligula and Gemellus. Now, Gemellus is that one on the family tree, so that is Tiberius's natural yes. grandson. Tiberius was a little bit worried that Gemellus was actually Sejanus's son in disguise. <laughs> but he also yes. kind of got an inkling that Caligula was a bit crazy. That's... Maybe he saw something of himself in him. So Amazing. he wasn't sure who to choose, but because Macro was putting a good word, Caligula does get raised to the level of heir. So does Gemellus. So that's interesting. I wonder how that would work. Because you kind of that would cause competition. Do you think you just want to see who's going to win? It's like you know the strongest one's going to survive. If that's the case, then all he needed to do was hang around a little bit after his death to find out. <laughs> Although how you hang around after your death, I'm not sure. But that's all he needed to do. Right, Tiberius dies, which we covered uh, last week. Yes. And as I said last week. He could have been murdered by Caligula, or by Macro, with Caligula saying, go and make sure he's definitely dead. Oh yes, that, that was it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Tiberius is dead, and then Caligula immediately has Tiberius's will nullified. Hmm. It says, Tiberius was insane, this will yeah. can't possibly stand, I'm the sole heir, Jamalus is no longer the heir. Oh. And just like that, Jamalus is cut out. Macro's wow. the head of the Praetorian Guard, he's back in Caligula, Jamelus doesn't have a leg yeah. to stand on, and he's just a young teenager at this point, whereas wow. um, Caligula is out of his teens. So Cal's just saying, well, he was mad, so his will can't stand up. He didn't sign it, for one. It wasn't countersigned. Yeah, there were no reliable witnesses. Yes. I was the only witness, witness and yeah. I'm crazy myself, so... Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work, does it? So he is now the Emperor, on his own. And it was never planned to be like that, but he just instantly politically manoeuvres himself, no fuss whatsoever. Mini coup straight there. Yeah, that is. Uh, yeah. Oh. So, impressive. I have, it, I have, I have um, All started respect. with that affair with Macro's wife. He knew how to have those affairs. I'm guessing that continues. Um, oh, I'm not sure actually, we'll see. Mm. Right. <laughs> okay, so Caligula accepted as emperor. He gets loads of nicknames from the public, such as Our Star and Our Baby. Everyone loves him. He's this new young hope. The old crazy Tiberius, who remember was in his late seventies and the public <laughs> thought was getting up to war sorts on his villa, is now dead. Oh yeah, and he didn't seem, he seem to like Rome, did he? Yeah, yeah, and uh, the people love Caligula. It's fantastic. Apparently, one hundred and sixty thousand animals were sacrificed in his honour. Well, that's that's. I'm guessing that's across horrific. the country, not in one place. <laughs> oh, the mess <laughs> would have been messy. I don't know how you'd even begin to slaughter one hundred and sixty thousand animals in one place. You see, if if there was like fleas, it'd be dead easy. Oh, yeah, it doesn't specify which animals. Yeah. You could line them all up in a corridor and get a big boar like an Indiana Jones. Oh, I like that. Just... Yeah. You need a very long corridor. You would. And a massive ball. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm guessing it wasn't like that. I'm guessing it was across Italy, one at a time. Yeah. People celebrating. Have you heard there's a new emperor? Yeah, get the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Not Fred. <laughs> Had him since I was a ball. <laughs> He also granted bonuses to the military. Good move. Yeah. Yeah. Always playing it. Yeah. And he helped all the people who had been harmed by Tiberius's crazy tax system. Bills his, his yeah. esteem. He put on some games. Ooh. Yeah. Tiberius hated putting on games, so he brought games to the public. Brilliant. Popular. We're having fun. He sounds really nice. Yeah. 
Um, then he brought back the bones of his mother and his brothers to the tomb of Augustus. Apparently the, it was a terrible day, pouring with rain, and he was just walking through the streets holding these ashes of his family that had been unjustly slaughtered and carried them into the tomb. An amazing image, everyone loved him for it. Just this young man who had to put his family to rest. So do you think that was partly propaganda? Do you think he's doing that on purpose? What, making it rain? No, not making it rain. Just... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. Is it him doing this genuinely? Because he seems genuinely? quite cold so far. Is it him doing it genuinely? Or was it propaganda? Look, they're being buried in Augustus's temple. Mm. I am a link to Augustus, not Tiberius. Ooh. Or did he sit around for several weeks going, come on, rain, come on, rain, and as soon as it started raining, quick, get the ashes, go! <laughs> we need the atmosphere. Yeah, we're not sure. Um, but he did that. Then he renamed September, what we used to call the month of September, Germanicus, which is obviously why it's called Germanicus today, yes. like August. Yes, August. the 13th month. Now, obviously, that one didn't stick, but we'll get yes. into that later. But for a while, and if it did stick, it would be June, July, August, Germanicus. Huh. Yeah. It's, it flows better, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah, I quite like it. Maybe we should bring August this Germanicus. back. Because Germanicus was a good egg. Yeah. I'd, I'd name a month after him. Mm. Yeah. So, starting that here, right now, listeners, let's bring back Germanicus instead of September. Hashtag Germanicus month. Yeah. Right, and then most importantly, what he did, which people loved, was he made a big bonfire in the middle of the forum. And what he burnt right. was all of the paperwork from those treason trials we talked about last week. Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. he got all the treason trial paperwork and said, everyone is free, no more treason trials. We won't be dragging you out of your beds for no reason and executing you. Always oh, building that trust. He's building that. He's kind of... building on that trust. They oh. loved it. It was all up in flames and everyone felt safe. Good man. And when people said, aren't you worried about assassination plots against you, he replied that he had done nothing to make himself odious to any person. So Aww. he felt safe. He knew that the people loved him. Who would conspire yeah. against him? And he's got the army on his side. Okay, so if we stopped there, mm. not bad, eh? No, yeah, lovely. Traumatic childhood, but he became emperor and he's sorting it all he out. He levelled out. He, um, yeah, he's done well in life. Right. The end. We'll see you next week. Thank you. <laughs> then, he becomes ill. For some people... Say mm. that this illness is the turning point, but others debate this and say it's not actually as cut and dry. But regardless, he becomes ill about one year in. He becomes seriously ill, he's close to death. Gosh. The public wept, everyone was sad. Senators rushed to offer things to the gods for his recovery. One even said he'd become a gladiator if Caligula su survived. Oh, Another said something <laughs> along the lines of, Take me, not him. Yeah. Oh, do, do you think the guy who said the gladiator thing was kind of just really, you know, was really close to death? I'll say, Yeah. I'll become a gladiator. Yeah, I'll be fine. I'll be a gladiator. If you survive, I'll do this. Ah, damn it. Funny you should say. Oh, God. <laughs> because Caligula recovered. Yes. <laughs> he did. And he heard reports of what all the senators were saying at the time. And he was very touched, obviously. Oh, yeah. So he went to the senator who said, I'll become a gladiator, and said, what do you think? Uh, off you go. Yeah. Here's your armour. <laughs> I've survived. You offered it to the gods, so you best go off. And mm. forced him to be a gladiator. And the <laughs> one who said, take him, not me. Oh, dear. And so it begins. He was the sacrifice, wasn't he? <laughs> yes, he was chucked off a cliff. In fact, he was chased through the streets by boys shaming him until he finally said, yes, I'll do it, and then he was chucked off a cliff. Wow. Yeah, I'm guessing... So, so next time you go, oh, you've got a bit of a cold there, oh, I wish I had a cold, maybe to a loved <laughs> one, don't say it, because they might take your word for it. Gosh. Right. It was around this time that Caligula gets married again. Oh, yay. yay. He attended a wedding, not his wedding. He attended mm. a wedding and he looked at the bride and they were all sat around and then the groom came in and was about to sit next to his bride-to-be. Mm. And Caligula looked up and said, See that you do not sit too close to my wife. Oh. Awkward pause. Is it a joke? Shall I laugh? Uh -huh. No, you shouldn't laugh. He is going to take your wife. Oh my, that is cold as well. So Caligula takes the wife and within two months is bored of her, forbids her ever to see the fiancé again and then exiles her. Uh, yeah. 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 So I, I, I'm going to a wedding this weekend. I, you should um, try it. See if it yeah, works. Yeah, I, I, I want to see. <laughs> Maybe I should see what happens. See, see the look yeah. of terror on you. 
know, I don't have armed people around me though, no, to enforce no. it. I'll probably just be told politely to leave. <laughs> right. So he, he had a second wife though. Yeah. For a short while. He then gets married again. Oh, the third wife, okay. Yeah, third wife. Before he got married again, he um, saw this old lady and then someone near him told him that this old lady used to be an incredibly beautiful woman in her prime. Yeah. Caligula then finds out that this old lady's got a granddaughter and also finds out that this granddaughter is married to an ex-consul who's in charge of an army out in the sticks somewhere. So he orders that con- ex-consul to come back to Rome with his wife. Yeah. Orders them to divorce and gets married to her. That's that's nice. Yeah. Again. Had, yeah. Hadn't even seen her, just seen an old lady, heard that she was all right, and then goes, well, the granddaughter must be as well. So then orders the divorce and gets married. I like things like the Anne of Cleves thing with Henry VIII. Like, oh, she's going to be so beautiful. And, oh, my good Lord, put that veil back down. <laughs> what have I done? Well, when he thought, what have I done? He then divorced her. Okay. Um, she saw it soon afterwards. He's a little... You, we, we could probably argue the point. He's a little bit fickle. A bit fickle, but nothing too terrible so far. Um, Just a little bit fickle. Just a few highlights. Yeah. yeah. He then has Jamelis killed. That was the other heir, wasn't it? That was the other heir. Okay. It wasn't enough just to push him outside. Um, he walked past him one day and um, could smell something and accused him of taking antidotes to poison. What? Hmm? So That's his, a good thing. Well, his theory was, why are you taking antidotes? You must be protecting yourself from poison, so you think poison's going to come near us, so you must be, you must be aware of a plot. Ah, paranoid. It's tenuous. Yeah. Especially since... Jamalus just had a cough and was having some cough sweets. Just a lozenger. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> he essentially had a whole soother and was killed for it. Yeah. So listeners, never <clears throat> buy hall soothers again. <laughs> the last thing you do. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So, kills off Jamalus and then he kills his grandmother and his father-in-law and his brother-in-law. So, yeah, I'm just going to say he kills family. Kills family. He starts basically getting rid of all his family. He's got quite paranoid by this point. In fact, the only real family member that he doesn't kill is Uncle Claudius and his pet rock. Oh, good. Yeah. Uncle Claudius his pet rocks, well trained. The reason why he keeps him alive is, one, Claudius has quite a bit of money, and two, yeah. he can laugh at him. He essentially keeps <laughs> him alive to be the court jester. Oh, yeah. that's kind of sad, but... Yeah, Claudius good. at this point, according to Suetonius, was looking very ill. Oh. Because Caligula would charge him huge sums of money for the smallest of things, just off the cuff. He'd just say, ah, I'm going to charge you this amount of money. So Caligula, uh, Claudius would have to give all his money away. He would play practical jokes on him and humiliate him in front of the whole Senate. He was there to be a laughing stock for Claudius. Yeah. Yeah. What is Rock thought as well? His rock, I, I think his rock would have been quite stoic about it. Yeah, just he strikes, he strikes me as a silent type. Yeah, maybe in the dead of night he'd whisper things to Claudius. Yeah. It'll be okay. I'll be closer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So his favourite sister, Drusilla, you remember Drusilla? Yeah. Drusilla's the one who he was very close to. Yes, they had a yeah. good, well, a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She then dies of an illness. So it's still just misery for him, even though he's starting to get a bit of a cruel streak. Um, Especially with his first uh, favourite sister as well. Yeah, I mean, all this time he's had those past three wives. He treats his sister more like his wife than he does those wives. So she's always the one who's held up in honour in yeah. feasts and things. So oh. she dies. Caligula is genuinely devastated by this. Um, so he then moves to have Drusilla deified. Oh, like uh, turn into like a, I guess it could be now would be a, a saint. Yeah, yeah, but I mean a fallen god back then. Oh wow. Yeah. He then accuses Lepidus so as a new person. This is Drusilla's widower, so Drusilla's husband. Caligula then accuses of having an affair with his other two sisters at the same time, and then executes him. <sighs> yeah. I think it's like jealousy there. Yeah, possibly. He then sends his two sisters into exile. So he's lost the one he was really close to, and he sends his other two away. He's becoming an island himself, isn't he, really? Yeah, he's. He, I imagine he must have been quite lonely at this point. It's, it's all self-done, though. I think. Oh, yeah, it's all self-done. Very controlled. He's mm. just killing off everyone, left, right and centre, apart from Claudius, so he can laugh at him. But he's not completely lost it by this point. He gets worse. 
<laughs> oh dear. <laughs> He's not completely lost at this point. Okay. In 38 CE, he helps some people who lost properties in fire. He nice. abolishes some more taxes. He restores some um, practice of democratic elections for certain posts. Mm. And he forces his friend Macro to commit suicide. Oh, uh, yeah. Just because he was bored one day. Okay. Yeah. So in the afternoon. Yeah. What, should, what shall I do? Macro, you look, you've just looked at me funny. You've got to go. Yeah, stop smiling. Have a blade. Why do we need a blade? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think, Macro? Right, then there's a financial crisis, unsurprisingly, mm. because Caligula has just been spending money left, right and centre. Within a couple of years, he's burnt through all the money that Tiberius has saved. Wow. Yeah, so, after getting rid of all those taxes that people yeah. loved him for, he then Ooh. has to introduce loads of new taxes. Yes. And he starts okay. trying to make money, so he auctions gladiators, he rewrites people's wills, so money's left to him instead of who it was originally Ooh. left for. Oh, that's cheeky. It's very cheeky. Um, he had a brothel built in the Imperial Palace. That's a good use of money. Yeah, so you can make money, but he wouldn't just put anyone in there. Well, more to point, he would just put anyone in there. It wasn't a oh. case of rounding up the local prostitutes to work up. It was just if he spotted someone, mm. thought they'd work well in his new brothel, that woman would then be forced to go to the brothel. Yeah, Hello, oh, you, you, would you ever consider a career in the, in the brothel industry? No, I'm afraid you're in. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't much choice around Caligula. Wow. It's around this time he marries his fourth wife. Oh, good. Yeah, actually, this one isn't a horrible story. This one he seemed to genuinely like. She was called Sisonia, um, and they had a daughter called Julia Drusilla, named after the sister that he loved. Oh. Yeah, so that's a bit of nice news, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's nice. Yeah, apparently Sisonia also liked to um, harm people, so they oh. had that in common. Well, it's good to have a yeah. common hobby, isn't it? And apparently... People feared the daughter would grow up a bit like that as well. Uh, yeah. Right. So, then in around 39 CE, notice how we've really not gone very far here. No, this is a, yeah. a, lot, of, a lot of dense 39 death. 39 CE, his relationship with the Senate starts to become a bit frayed. If, it's, <laughs> if not full on torn asunder. Oh dear. Yeah. Um, senators under Tiberius were used to being um, given a certain amount of autonomy and respect. Yeah. Caligula gave them nothing. He treated them with nothing but contempt. Well, he can. Look what he's doing. He, he, he's... Well, this is the problem with absolute rule, isn't it? Yeah. All it takes is someone to actually start saying, well, you can't stop me, and everyone else goes, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got the army. I've got the preparatory. The Praetorian Guard. I've got them. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? You're just yeah. people that meet in white robes. Yeah. So, he rounds the Senate up, <sighs> and he says, I've got a surprise for you. Oh, God. What do you think the surprise is? Is it death? Is it a deathy surprise? Was it like, here's a present, open up the present, a little beautifully wrapped, a little bow, open up the bloody rattlesnake or something, or a, <laughs> um, a harpoon? It, it may well have been. He um he stood up and said something along the lines of, you remember when I built that big bonfire and I burnt all of the trees and tile paperwork? <sighs> Joke! <Yeah. laughs> oh. I've got it all here! <laughs> and he tapped the chest next to him, and then he starts executing senators Fantastic. based on Tiberius's old treason trials. The treason trials are back. It's the back of the days where you can't say a single word because you'll be dragged off to a treason court and killed. Yeah. That's... Oh, that, oh man. So, did, so do you think he actually did keep it or he's just said that because he just wants to get rid of them? We don't really know. I'm guessing he just wants to get rid of them. It could be that. I d he didn't but have part of me probably. likes the um the idea of the sinister forethought of not actually burning them, but then making a big bonfire anyway and pretending you have. Yeah. Depends whether you want to go down the Caligula was an evil genius or Caligula was just off his head route. I'm kind of like the evil genius route. It's yeah, it's like the emperor from Star Wars. Yeah, right. Then on fort in forty CE he goes on campaign to expand the empire. Mm. Yeah, because that didn't happen to Tiberius at all. No, it was very static. We're going to go through this in Phytius Maximus, so I'm just going to leave it there. Let you think for a while how well that went. <laughs> it obviously went well enough that he returned, though, because when he returned, he starts to state that he's actually a god. Right now, he is a god. So his ego is still pretty small, then. Yeah, yeah. So two temples are put up in Rome. People have to start worshipping him. He has the heads removed from other statues of gods and has his head put on them. <laughs> I, I love the idea of just like a... Like a little class of little Roman school, preschool, making little clay heads that are really bad and having them put on the top. <laughs> the beautiful carved marble and little clay, <laughs> crappy head at the top. It just, rolls off. Just squashed on <laughs> yeah. with blue tack. Then a, a gust of wind has rolled. <laughs> oh. yeah. 
Um, so he orders all the empire should worship him. This doesn't go down too well with the Jewish community. Now, obviously, everyone else worshipped many gods. Yeah. So it's not too bad, I'm just adding the one to the list. But the Jewish community, they don't like the fact they've got to stop worshipping their god and start worshipping Caligula. So tensions rise. There's almost a revolt in the Ooh. east, which um, one of Caligula's friends manages to just about put down. Good. Yeah, um, but it it was close, and it was not Caligula managing to put that down. It was no. someone managing to do it for him, just, just about, about convince Caligula that maybe this isn't a good idea. Yeah. And it would appear Caligula actually listened to him, mm. or at least died before he could do anything yeah. else. Because we then go into the final days of his life. By this wow. point, everyone's had enough of him. He's killing everyone around him, so just pure survival of the fittest. It's fight or flight time. Yeah. People start realising he's got to go. So, the Senate and the Praetorian Guard start hatching some plans. There's a few assassination attempts that don't pull off. But a Praetorian Ooh. Guard called Chera, if I'm pronouncing that correctly at all, hatches a plan. Now, this Praetorian Guard has been mocked by Caligula for years for being weak and effeminate. So every time he came along, he'd just make fun of his voice, the way he looked, the way this he stood. Chira. Yeah. With a name like that, though. I don't think you pronounce it Chira, but let's do so um, from now That's on. why I really like, yay! Yeah. Yeah. He says, hi! Yay. Really happy and happy Yeah, you get cheerful. the impression he was he was a bit, bit happy very, and cheerful. Very effeminate. Yeah, but you don't want to mess with him, because when he hatches a plan, he hatches a good plan. Oh. Yeah, well, I say a good plan, it worked. <laughs> On the 22nd of January, 41 CE, Caligula was walking through a corridor with a hangover. <laughs> yeah. When, all of a sudden, he was accosted by a group of Praetorian guards. Chira stabs first, and then all the guards join in. He is brutally stabbed many times to death. So, oh wow, that that's a... It's a very blunt plan. It's a very blunt plan, but it, it worked. It really well did. <laughs> Chira obviously sat down and thought, well, we could go along the lines of something to do with a letter, and someone sneaks around when he's not looking, and we distract him, and we make him feel like he's in a position of power, but really he's losing support. Or we could just keep stabbing him until he's dead. Say aye. Aye. <laughs> Well, I, I like the idea of just him going in front of saying, we're going to do this, we'll play mind games, we'll, it'll take months of preparation, I've been working on this for years, here's my PowerPoint, you know, this is going to work, so T, I've got models here, like my, like my model here, and the guy back, could we just stab him? Uh, we could just stab him, couldn't we? we could, uh, you know, I've spent months on this, but we could go with easy route if you want. It's an option, it's an option, we we'll, could go we'll, there. We'll think about it, yeah. yeah. So they went for option B in the end. Yes. Good, straight to the point, stabby stabby. Literally to the point. <laughs> Yes. Wow. So he's just brutally... Brutally murdered. Brutally murdered. Very much in the way of the old Gaius Julius Caesar. So the Senate at this time try and use the time for the first time to restore the Republic. Ah, so make it more... well, make it better. Yeah, which Chira wants to do. He's very much for restoring the Republic at this point, so he tries to convince the rest of the Praetorian Guard to side with the Senate to restore the Republic. Um, but most of the Praetorian Guards didn't want the Republic to come back because they're paid to protect the Emperor. Uh, if there's no Emperor, who's going to pay them? Yes, and they yeah. want paying. So, the Assassins realise that they might lose their chance here. So think, right, we've really got to carry on through with this plan. We can't just kill Caligula. Mm. So they then go and find Caligula's wife, Susanna, the mad one. Yes. And brutally kill her as well. Oh, that's... okay. And then they pick up um, baby Drusilla and smash her head against the wall. Oh, yeah, that's a bit brutal. I get it in the, in, in the control power sense, but that's horrible. Yeah, again, maybe in the meeting. Yeah, so do, do should we, we have to? Should we do anything with the baby? Smash head against the wall? Oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> we, we couldn't do, I mean, we, well, we, we could. We'll see uh, how, we'll play by ear. We'll yeah, play we'll, by ear. We'll, we'll see, see how, how we feel at the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, oh. but there's one person left. Okay, I'm trying to work out. Oh my goodness. Who's left? Is it is it Uncle Claudius? It is Uncle Claudius. Oh. Uncle Claudius, at this point, runs for his life. Yeah. He picks up his rock, because the rock moves slowly. He's got to hold him in his arm. Oh, yeah. And he runs into the palace, and he hides behind a curtain. <laughs> Honestly. That's really That's sad. what happens. He hears footsteps. They get louder and louder. And all of a sudden, the curtain is pulled aside, and there is a group of men standing with bloodied swords. And that's where we're going to leave it. Oh, no! Because now, we're going to rate 
Caligula, because that's starting to get onto a new story, which we won't be able to do till next week. So we're just going to leave that cliffhanger right there. Wow. Whilst we go on to... Fightius Maximus. Maximus. Okay, so we've looked at the biography there. We've looked at the rather sad life of Caligula and the uh, the way he handled all that depression. But now yes. let's, let's look at his fighting ability. So I mentioned that he tried to expand the empire. He did two attempts, Germany and Britannia. So if Ooh. you remember, Germany still isn't fully under control and never really does become under control. Yeah. Um, but they're still chipping away at it this time. Yeah. And Britannia, although Julius Caesar went over there a few decades before, mm. is not under Roman control at this point. No, still kind of led by the Celts and everyone else, yeah. the Britons. So in 39 CE, shortly after he'd ex uh, executed several of the consuls, he heads mm. off to the Rhine. According to, Su to Suetonius, he drew together several legions and auxiliary forces from all quarters, collecting supplies of all kinds, such has never been assembled upon the like. So that's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, he built this really good army, or at least a big army. Yeah. <laughs> He's drunk, he'll do. So, on the way to the Rhine, sometimes he'd be rushing way ahead and forcing the army to keep up, and other times he'd be carried in a litter and force locals to sprinkle water on the road so the dust would kick up so he could have a relaxing time. Yeah, he's a bit of a flower, isn't he? There, there's not much consistency in his journey. And that's going to be a problem if you're leading some Yeah, people. armies work... I, I'm no general, but I think discipline and consistency is what you need in an well, army. Well, it's true. Then if, like, if you're a boss of business, like, you've got to be yeah. consistent with your approach. Yeah, consistency is very can't important. Be, Come on, guys! Uh, can't be yeah, let's, let's stop for a while. No, go, 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 go! Army not too happy with them before he even arrives. They get to the Rhine, and then yeah. they camp, and then word during a feast is brought to him that a uh, Germanic army was approaching. So he immediately drops what he's doing, and he bravely rides off into battle. He returned shortly afterwards, claims a great victory, and he has some hostages with him. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. So he wins that battle. And then he goes back to the feast when word comes again that those hostages have escaped. So he immediately jumps up, back on his horse, rides down the barbarians, catches them again, comes back to the camp. I take it he's not doing this all by himself. Well, it sounds like he is. <laughs> yeah, no, pretty much. It's him and a couple of other people. Oh. I mean, obviously he had an army for the first yeah. bit. But that capturing the barbarians, there's not many people there. Brave heroics, yeah? Not bad? Oh, is this a farce? <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Oh, dear. <laughs> Let me rewind to them arriving at the Rhine. Right. There is part of the Praetorian Guard that are made up of Germanic people. Yes. Like conscripts, or they're, they're yeah. synthetic. And, yeah. They're, they're deemed to be trustworthy because they won't try and get high up in Rome because mm. they're Germanic, but they are good fighters, so you've got... And the muscle. Yeah, you've got an attachment of his Praetorian Guard who are Germanic. Okay. He dresses them up so yeah. they look like they are an invading army and sends oh. them across the river. He then goes to have his feast right. and has someone come in and say, there's an army coming. So he rides off... I'll sort this, lad. You sit here and eat. He rides off to face his own Praetorian guard. They make lots of noises in the bushes, yeah. trot ah, down trees, oh and he comes back with the hostages. His own Praetorian guard yeah. dressed up. Do you think some sort of went, hey, it's Eric. Eric. <laughs> Eric. 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 No, it's not Eric. <laughs> My name is Clive. I'm Hans Gruber. <laughs> yeah. So then the hostages escape. Like, oh. All pre planned. Yeah. So he rides off bravely, comes back. Now, we can't know for certain. Oh. But we get the feeling that this fooled nobody. Yeah, it's because, because as you just said, you go, that's Eric. Hey, it's Bill. Bill as well. Yeah. I, I, yeah, we had. Really? Yeah. We share a tent. <laughs> Take off that fake beard. You're looking at you. You're it's wearing my you. socks. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's you. Yeah, the little light up ones. Stop the silly Scottish accent. It's not calling <laughs> anyone. Especially a Scottish accent. Yeah. We don't even know where that is. Oh. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> yeah, so it, it doesn't really work. At that point, word comes in that a real barbarian host is approaching, so he scarpers as quickly as he possibly can. Yeah. Sir, sir, there's another barbarian army, but we only booked two. Oh, oh, um, <laughs> so, oh, oh, I think, oh, damn, I wish yeah. we could fight, but the food's got... cooking and yeah. irons are... Uh... So they all go off and they line up on the English Channel. It's time to invade Britain. Yes. Yes. Do you da, think he does better da, da, here? Da, da, da. Uh, there's water in the way. Oh, there is, and that's a big obstacle. 
Caligula clearly looked at this obstacle and thought, nah, <laughs> leave him to it. So he lines up his army, ready to face the enemy. Yeah, the White Cliffs. Yeah, there is no enemy. But he lines up the army anyway, yeah. ready to face this enemy. I can imagine the army standing around looking at each other at this point, going, what is going on? We've been staring at the cliffs for hours. Yeah. So then there's no ships, there's nothing. It's clearly no battle about to happen. Then Caligula orders them to attack. How do you attack when there's no enemy? Well, apparently you collect all the seashells off the beach and then declare that you've beaten Neptune himself. Okay. Yeah. That's the sign of a sane man. <laughs> yeah, so he gets a lovely seashell collection. <laughs> Make nice necklace. <laughs> yeah, and, and he's, he's defeated the god of the sea. That's something. Because that is obviously Neptune's weakness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and all of the soldiers obviously very proud of themselves. Yeah. Right, then... He decides it's time to instill a bit more discipline because these soldiers clearly are they're just not cut out. That, yes. It was quite close cut against those seashells. It's almost like laughing at Well, yeah. Yeah. Him, well, yeah. yeah, and they, they do keep sniggering every time he walks past for some reason, so it's time to sort that out. Yeah. Do you remember keep when I said... Shelley. <laughs> do you remember when I said Oi, those Shelley. Um, troops rebelled when Tiberius became emperor and yes. Augustus died? Yes. And Drusus and Germanicus went to go and put it down. Yes, they did. Yeah. So Caligula decides it's now time to sort those legions out. They're clearly not trustworthy. Those legions are ordered to line up in formation, but they've got to leave all their armour and weapons behind. If you were a soldier in this army, yeah. and you knew the person had just told you to invade a beach with nothing on it, and then tells you to all stand in a square with no weapons, would you want to do that? I'd be slightly hesitant. Yeah, the legions were slightly hesitant. Instead of doing that, they all run off and get their swords. They yeah. realised they were about to be rounded, mm. round up and killed. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was Caligula's plan. Round them all up, kill them off, off, and then no more legions. He's installed discipline by mm. killing everyone. But he soon realises that the legions are on to him, so he jumps on his horse and runs away. Yeah, run away. Yeah, he goes back to Rome after defeating not just the Germans, but Neptune himself. And so he's he's come back a victor. He has he has a triumph when he goes back to Rome and everything. Yeah. Obviously shows off his she seashells. He's yeah. Okay, so that is the um the Fightius Maximus. Maximus. We now need to rate his fighting ability. <sighs> okay. I'm going zero. <laughs> <laughs> he has no fighting ability. <laughs> At all, in any way, shape, or form. The fact he tried to trick them, it didn't work in the slightest. He, I mean, to be fair, he beat the shells. <laughs> I might give him half for that. He did beat the shells, but it could have been a close cut thing. Well, he, yeah, he might have stubbed his toe on one. Yeah. They might have got a bit of revenge, a little bloody, little bloody cut there on his big toe. I think. I'm it's, writing zero. For me. You write zero. I mean, he's. It's beyond farcical, isn't it? He makes yeah. up his own enemy and then runs away from the real enemy. Then he fights inanimate objects, yeah. and then he tries to instill discipline in his own troops and has to run away. And that didn't even work, yeah. Yeah. It's got to be zero. Excellent. Two pair of eyes. That is... <laughs> pair of eyes. That is zero for Phytius Maximus. Approvium Crazium. I have a feeling this is his round. <laughs> I think he'll score well. <laughs> yes. So let's let's go into his opprobrium crazium, shall we? Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is basically all the stuff I couldn't quite squeeze into the the narrative parts. Yeah. Yeah. Caligula ordered that a three mile bridge be built over the mouth of the Gulf of Bay. He had countless ships fastened together, and then built a road over the top. He then spent two days riding up and down that road on horseback and chariots. Just going up and down. Yeah. People cheered. Whether they cheered because they wanted to or they cheered because they had to, it's, it's kind of like the North Korea. Keep clapping, keep clapping, my God, keep <laughs> clapping. That sort of thing. Yeah, I, th I think so. This is a huge undertaking, a three-mile-long bridge yes. built yeah. over a bay. Even now, that's a, like the, the yeah. Humber Bridge is a mile long, and yeah. that's impressive now. Yeah, that's impressive you have that fact on your fingertips. I know a lot of things. Oh, that's good. They're rubbish, but it's yeah. a thing. <laughs> But yeah, it's a huge undertaking, really was. Why do you think he did it? See, one reason could be to... Well, the logical reason, <laughs> which I'm guessing is not going to apply here, is for transporting goods across uh, an area. 
Um, another reason is because he could, or is it because he was trying to hold down the water in case it drowned him? <laughs> I love that last one. That one could be true. Um, it certainly wasn't to try and improve transport. Of course not. He had it dismantled afterwards. Right. It's just because. <laughs> he wanted a bridge. Right, one this day. is one of my favourite Suetonius quotes ever. Because he attempts to explain it. Okay. So he says, Go Most on. people I know are of the opinion that this bridge was designed by Gaius in imitation of Xerxes, who, to the wonder of the world, laid a bridge over the heaven spot. So when Xerxes attacked Greece, Greece, yeah. and he went over the Hellespont, he built a bridge, didn't he, out of pontoons? Get the army across. Get yeah. the army off. Okay. Suetonius goes on. Others, however, thought that he did it to strike terror into Germany and Britain, which he was on the point of invading. Suetonius then goes on to his final theory, which is the bit I really love. But for myself. When I was a boy, I heard my grandfather say <laughs> that when Tiberius was unsure about the nomination of his successor and rather inclined to pitch upon Gemellus, his astrologer had assured him that Gaius would no more be emperor than he would ride on horseback across the Gulf of Bae. So just to prove a metaphorical point wrong. Yes. <laughs> oh my That goodness. is why he did it. But I also love <laughs> Suetonius, who is one of the foremost people we rely upon to study the Romans yeah. resorts to. When I was a boy I heard my grandfather say. <laughs> yeah, I, my my mate who I meet down the pub once a week, his his grandfather's babysitter yeah. said that. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's a nice I, reason though, I like. Yeah, I think that highlights the fact that we need to take all of it with a pinch of salt. Yeah. But it's but, a good bit of salt though, isn't oh, it? It's, a, it's tasty salt. Oh. I'm going to keep eating it. Mm. Yeah. So, it's it's all very well and good. I mean, even if that last point is true and he did it just to prove this astrologer wrong, hmm. well, fair enough. He's made his point. I I like, you'd almost want to shake his hand, wouldn't you? It's like, ah, well played there. Apart from the 50,000 people that died in its construction. <laughs> well, yeah, you've got the fact that so many people died in its construction, we assume. Mm. We don't know that for certain. But what we do know is charged, that yeah. there was a widespread famine afterwards because all those boats that was used to make the bridge um, were actually the grain boats. Ah. So many people starved to death afterwards. Ah. Yeah. So... Other things he did. Sometimes he ordered the covers of the amphitheatres to be removed when it was really hot and forbade anyone water or to leave just to see what would happen. Just... Is anyone going to leave? Yeah, it's Are like you leave? can't leave and you can't have water and you can't get out the sun. <laughs> he, I'm guessing he's the kind of person that would also, if they did, he would kill them. Oh, yeah. And then the, the games wouldn't continue on as normal. He'd then bring out the most useless gladiators and the almost dead animals so that the performances weren't even good to watch. He, why he was doing it, no one knows. Just to show that he could, we assume. Something else. He would invite <laughs> senators and their wives around for dinner. That's all right, isn't it? <laughs> You just start getting a bad feeling, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so they'd all sit down, and then he'd look around the table, or the seating area, so he didn't have, like, big tables, as we think, mm -hmm. and um, then he'd point to one of the wives, take them off to the bedroom. Play charades? Who knows? Actually, no, we do know, because when they returned, he would then, in detail, describe to everyone there exactly how well she had performed. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes, if he wasn't particularly pleased with the performance, yeah. he would file for divorce for the husband, saying that it was a favour. Ah. <laughs> that is a look of shock on your I... face for the listener's benefit there. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> you could just imagine the senator going home and saying, I've got an invitation to the Amphras. Oh dear. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> or a new senator didn't know walking into the Senate. Oh guys. Oh, I'm lucky. I oh, didn't me and my wife invited you to the senator. Just silence. Yeah. <laughs> Bong. Yeah. Oh. Pretend you're ill. <laughs> Pretend you're ill. <laughs> Pretend you're oh. dead. Be dead. Do something. Our marriage hasn't been the same since. <laughs> I look so... at her, I see him. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> so he also treated his horse better than he treated most human beings alive. He had a marble stable built and oh. a house so the horse could receive guests. 
<laughs> yeah. I oh. would actually send out invitations where the course was the host. Really? He also, and this is the really famous one, you may have heard of this, although it doesn't quite happen how people think it does. Mm. Have you heard that Caligula made his horse consul before? Yes. Yeah, no, we've got no evidence well, that no, he sounds... made the horse consul, but he used to make jokes that he was going to make this horse a consul. Yeah. More effective than you. Yeah, exactly. But sir, he's so long in the face. Ha <laughs> ha kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so... Take the mick out of my horse. I yeah. Love my horse. So, I mean, either he's completely box of frogs crazy, or this I'm going to make my horse console because he's better than you sounds quite sane. So he's actually doing all of this stuff with a very sane mind, which uh, I, I'm, I, is quite chilling, really, isn't it? I, I'm not getting that impression now. Right. Also... Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, there's more. We're about halfway through. Um, <laughs> he would hold meetings with senators. Yeah, that's fine. Again, you've got that look of terror on your face. Yeah. I can probably say anything at this point, couldn't I? Also, he gave money to orphans and you oh, just look, <laughs> you'd look horrified. Yes. He'd help old ladies across the street. Why? <laughs> 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 so, he'd hold these meetings with the senators. Um, but he would get on his litter and force the senators to run alongside during the meeting. <laughs> if the senators couldn't keep up, he would then punish them. Uh. Bearing in mind, senators were usually quite old. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, now I couldn't <laughs> find out what punishing them meant, but um, I'm guessing it's not I can a make... sort of sharp memo. No, a, a wit yeah, a little, a slightly cold email. Yeah, probably not that, which is CC'd their immediate superior. And, Ooh, yeah, well, oh, yeah, oh, that's nasty. That's yeah. nasty, that is, yeah, isn't that it? Is. Yeah, Yeah, but I'm oh. guessing he went even further than that. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I've now for the first time got a subsection in Approbium Crazy, Ooh. which is just called Executions. <laughs> <laughs> that sums it up, really. He would execute people on hearsay for crimes as petty as passing a remark at a public game. You did, needed no proof or evidence whatsoever. All you needed was to say to Caligula, I heard Steve said this about you, Steve and his family were dead. That's a bit like the lists in the halls to put your friends' names down. Yeah, yeah, it's back it's to the, like the the prescriptions again. Yeah. Um, Jeff says your horse has got weird hooves. But the difference there, that cold and horrific as it was, was for a purpose. It was to raise money. This is just because Caligula likes killing people. So, before executions, he would brand people's faces or force them to fight with wild beasts just for entertainment. Uh, like, it's the, it's the kind of classic fighting with a lion here could just be like a, I know, a wolf pack of wolves. Or, yeah, badger. A bat they can be quite pigeon. ferocious. Pigeons pigeon. can as well. I once yeah. had a cone of chips, uh, well, part of a cone of chips stolen by a uh, seagull. Did you? I was terrified. Because yeah. seagulls are a lot bigger than you think. No, they get close. They're quite big, aren't they? Yeah. So maybe he also got them close to seagulls with chips. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Here, here, hold these chips. <laughs> hold this. No. Go, go and stand by the sea. See, you can start that story off with, um, you clearly used to buy chips for children. Oh, I could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> and then forced, forced them to stand near seagulls. Yeah. The sadist. <laughs> um, he would <laughs> execute people using a thousand cuts, as he'd say. Oh, I... He would stab people over days, missing all yes. important organs. And he would say, cut him so he may feel like he is dying. He wanted to make sure that that was a long, painful, yeah. suffering and death. Because um, um, I'm doing a little bit of work at the moment about torture and crime. Um, <laughs> like you do. <laughs> I'll, 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 shall I say what my job is? I'm actually a teacher. Part of our topic at the moment is to do with uh, crime and punishment. We're looking at torture methods and we, we looked at a little thousand cuts and the precision you needed, you need real specialist knowledge to... Yeah, 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 you, you would. You'd people have that to... would love as much as Caligula to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, you'd have to really know what not to hit, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, not just stabby, stabby. And they'd take off like patches of skin and muscle and stuff, oh. so they wouldn't be able to move their arm, but they could still feel. Oh, I have pain. an image of the faces of the children in your class, right? <laughs> <laughs> as you go into detail. Yes. Now, now it's time for the practical session of the lesson, children. Yeah. Well, what did have you, you learn today at school, little Jimmy? <laughs> I want darkness. <laughs> so, sometimes he would tie back to Caligula here. Sometimes he would tie people up by their hands and feet onto a pole as if being led to slaughter, and then saw them asunder. 
is that is that they kind of get those images like medieval images like a big like bigger saw and they're being kind of sliced from the... that that's what the image i got yeah. i couldn't find any more details a i sunder think doesn't sound nice re, yeah the word is i didn't even know i had an asunder yeah you, you don't <laughs> you don't want to saw them do you, <laughs> you don't. having your asunder sword brings a tear to the eye <laughs> it does <laughs> If he was executing a son or a daughter and the parents were living, oh. he would invite the parents to come and watch. No. One time, a father claimed he was too ill to come and watch. <laughs> so Caligula kindly sent his own litter round to go and fetch the that's, father. That's good. That was kind of him, wasn't it? It's thoughtful. Yeah. It's the little things that count. It is. Another father he invited to his table afterwards and then <laughs> challenged him to be merry and jest. Possibly the most forced humour in history. Again, we've got that shocked face from Jamie. <laughs> Carry on. When one person shouted he was innocent before being fed to a wild beast, Caligula had his tongue torn out so he could enjoy the process more. He didn't like being interrupted by all these process protests oh. of innocence. That's no, rude. It is. It I'll ruined. tell if you're innocent. You've been through a court. Well, no, I've said you're guilty, so... Yeah. Um... After recalling a person that Tiberius had sent into exile, so remember this, Tiberius sent lots of people into exile, didn't he? Okay, yeah. Okay. right. This again, this sounds quite nice. Oh, so I'm sent to exile by my, my predecessor. Come back! Yeah. yeah, it's one that starts quite nicely. So Caligula <laughs> says, come on back, and this person comes back. Idiot. And Caligula... <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Um, Caligula says to this man, what, what did you do during all of that time you were sent away? And the man, looking to flatter said, I prayed to the gods that Tiberius might die so you would be emperor. Now this got Caligula thinking, if he wanted an emperor to die, then maybe all the people Caligula had exiled might be out there praying for his death. So he then sent out orders that everyone he had exiled up to that point be killed. That's... Because of an off remark from someone. I couldn't find out what happened to the man. It wouldn't surprise me if he was then killed for merely thinking that an emperor should die. But I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so if you thought that you could think it again, you have powers. <laughs> yeah. Kill him! Pure speculation there. But... This is this is now Kligo wearing his little tinfoil hat yes. while he's saying this. <laughs> Can't read my thoughts. Can't read my thoughts. <laughs> and he also lo he loved a joke, did Caligula. I can tell. Yeah. Um, he loved to joke about killing those that he was close to. So He one... did. <laughs> he did joke about it. He actually did it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But when he was dining with a couple of friends, he started to laugh, and they asked him what he was finding so funny. And he replied, At what house? But that, at a single nod of my head, you might have your throats cut. I imagine the laughing stopped very quickly. Or started really quickly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how you jest. <laughs> jest. Please jest. Please, Please jest. Children. And also, he would say to his mm. wives whilst kissing their necks, mm. As fair as lovely a neck this is. Off it shall go if I but say the word. Oh, Pillow okay. talk. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Keeps them in line, I guess. So that's on the bad insane list. I now move on to the good sane. You ready? I have in my notes nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say nothing. So we now <sighs> need to rate him. Well, he's called zero on fighting, so I might have to go for ten. For I... mentalness. Maybe 9.8. 9.9 at a point. I, I know what you mean. I think it's got to be a full 10. He, yeah. He went full out here, didn't he? He held nothing back. So, yeah. That's a t he's a tin foil hat wearing <laughs> lunatic. He really is. Tin foil was probably invented for the sole purpose of him wearing it on his head. Yeah. Yeah, so... That but, is... sir, this is a new crown for you. <laughs> it shall stop other thoughts getting you. Ah, thank you. I appreciate this. Kill him. Oh, don't forget, he did admit himself that he heard Augustus's voice in his head. Yeah. Yeah. So he heard a lot of things in his head. Probably did. They're right. laughing at you. Kill them, kill them. Kill them now. Kill them now. <laughs> kill them now. Ten each. Yeah. So and that is full on twenty. <laughs> full on twenty for a probium crasium. Successes ultimus. Okay, so successes <laughs> ultimus. <laughs> you laugh, but I, actually I think we have to define success here. You'd be surprised. Actually it's not I don't think it's gonna be a flat zero. I've got some stuff. So <laughs> He invented tinfoil. <laughs> he invented tinfoil. He found out lots of new ways to kill people. Yes, um, <laughs> but he What he did do, um, he finished quite a lot of buildings that Tiberius didn't get to finish. So he actually did do some public buildings uh, in Rome, and he helped yeah. build up the city. Mm -hmm. 
He um, started an aqueduct which had to provide water for the people. He didn't finish it in his lifetime, but that's because he didn't rule for very long. We'll find out how long soon. But he did start an aqueduct, yeah, so we can credit him for that. That's important. Um, there were some temples in disrepair, so he had some of those repaired. With his own face. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good point. A lot of those statues, oh, that, that statue's looking a bit dodgy, isn't it? Put my face on it. <laughs> um, bad. He spent all the money. Mm. He spent all the money on things like cruise ships. The first ever cruise ship was built by Caligula. I like that idea. I, I, I see I, I see it like the one in Star Wars with Jabba the Hutt on. Oh, well done. You go, oh, no, it's Star Wars, not Star Trek. I've been waiting for the Star Trek reference I'm, sure, I'm still waiting. I'm oh, still waiting. Uh, it's going to happen. Now, the, these were giant ships that had running water on them. Wow. They had swimming pools. They had mosaics on the floor. Saunas. It was full on, full on cruise ship, and he had two wow. built. They must have cost a fortune. Yeah. They were dug up in um, the 30s. And then bombed in the 40s. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. We've got photos of the remnants and we've got bits left, but all the. Bits of wood. Yeah, we, quite a bit of the hull had survived, but unfortunately, World War II wiped it out. <sighs> yeah. Damn you. Um, so you it can left. see photos. We'll put a photo of that up online yeah. as well. So wow. he spent all the money. Yeah. And he also caused that famine. Yes, with the boat, with bridge. Yeah, so it's it's not it's not great, is it? But he did, he built an aqueduct. Yeah. Oh, or started he... building an aqueduct, or someone under him, whilst Caligula was busy killing people, gave an order for an aqueduct to be built, and it got through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he's successful enough to actually get a three-mile bridge built, even yeah, that, though it that's caused impressive, isn't massive it? famine. Yeah, and but I suppose if it I was... I have done that. If it was for the reason that he wanted to strike fear into the Britons and the Germans, maybe it did. Maybe they thought, oh no, they're across the Rhine, they're across the English Channel. Even though they probably had no idea where the Rhine was, they didn't know where Italy was, they <laughs> didn't know who Caliglia was, Caligula was. Yeah, I don't know, it's not It's not great, is it? He didn't expand the empire. He failed spectacularly to expand the I empire, mean, didn't he? I mean, he did conquer the Shell Empire, we'll give him that. The Shell Empire, maybe the Shell Empire would have risen without Caligula and would have That's overthrown true. the Romans and we'd all be living under the Shell Empire Ooh. right now. Maybe we should give him credit for that. That's Yes. He probably believed that. <laughs> he <did>. <laughs> um, I know. I'm going to give him 0. 0.5 for starting an aqueduct. You repair it? Well, I'm going to give him one. Yeah. Because the building and the temples as well on top of that. So he, he, at least I'm guessing in the early part of his career, just, you know, did we try and regenerate Actually, the city? Actually, no, you're right. He did repair some temples, didn't he? So, okay, I'll give him another 0. 0.5. So I'll give him one. So we're giving him sure. one apiece. So a combined total of... Do. Image of Facious. Oh, if he's not wearing a tenfold hat, I'd be very disappointed. <laughs> I'm going to show you. Before I show you, though, I'm going to point something out that I've noticed. We have a discrepancy. We are saying Image of Facio, and on our card it says Image of Facio, but when you first recorded, before we recorded our first episode, those little sound bites, you said Image of Facious. Oh. So we have two names for this round, so I think we need to make a decision now whether it's Image of Facio or Image of Facious. I think Image of Facious flows better. Okay, so you don't need to re record that, but no. I do need to go and remake those cards again. Thanks. <laughs> right, okay, I'll do that, shall I? <laughs> right, okay, so for Image of Facious. I, again, have two images for you. Can I draw what I think he would look like? Oh, I like that, and you can put that up on the... Yeah. Yeah, you draw this, what he thinks he looks like. What I think he would look like. And whilst you're doing that, I'll describe to the audience what you're doing. So we've got a rounded how, face at the moment. How's your, like, a foam coming out of the mouth? That's what... <laughs> you, I don't know, small little bubbles. We've got a, a wavy face. Are they teeth, or is that foam? That's teeth, that's teeth. That's teeth, okay. Got a couple of eyes, one eye, yeah, and oh, they, they look a bit crazy, those eyes. Of course they look crazy, my <laughs> God. And then, um, go for the hair. Yeah, I'm going to do sort of tear this, I think, been pulled out <laughs> a little bit in places, you know. Yeah, so we've got patchy hair now. I'm guessing he probably didn't have a statue made like this. No, well, um, we'll get on to that in a moment. Okay, so we've got patchy hair, and now you are drawing an umbrella. Yes. Is that to keep the rain off him? Uh, to or... stop the bad thoughts in it, I don't know really. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> A break from the voices. Okay, right, so we'll put that image up. Are you ready to see what he, well, I say what he really looked like. Are you ready to see what the statues made him look like? Oh, there's now a tinfoil hat there as well. Yeah, just kind of so, floating above. Here he is. 
explain what you can see. Wow, okay, well, there, there are two images. There's um, kind of a, I think, a more modern colourised image. Yeah, it's interesting. This is the first time we've got a colour marble bust. So that is a marble bust, but they <laughs> coloured it in <laughs> using paint. Mm. But what they did is they scientifically figured out what the colours were and matched them. So that mm. is as close as we can get to what it actually looked like at the time. Because the marble busts in Rome were not all white. They were all, always painted. Yeah. So I know oh, modern I day, know yeah, modern day we've got this image of classical Rome being full of white marble. It wasn't yeah. at all. They painted their busts. That image there is what it would have looked like at the time. Wow. Oh, okay. well, that's... Yeah. yeah. And that's true for all of them. Mm. So that's a recreation. We will put this up. So that's a few um, so I'm guessing when they when they when they obviously look at their busts, they um maybe got get parts of you know, chips of paint that might be left. Yeah, yeah, they microscopic the bits of paint and figure out what the colour was. So he he looks like I mean certainly on the unpainted one he's got a he look he's got a bit of a frown. He hasn't got pupils, which is a sign of madness. <laughs> um, he's got quite short hair. He looks actually quite normal. He looks like Draco Malfoy. Yeah, he does in the unpainted one. Oh my goodness. He? Yeah. He look. I maybe I'm biased because I've heard the uh, stories, yeah. but he's got a slightly sinister look I, about him. I think him, we're hasn't putting he? on. Yeah, we're we're putting on a. a yeah. So let's let's just bit. pretend that this is actually a bust of say, um, young Agrippa. Oh, he's lovely. I don't know. He's still looking sinister no, to is. me. <laughs> it, it's the. I don't know. He's. He's got almost like a bit of a frown. Yeah. And his he head's has. slightly tilted, like. Yeah, slightly I condescending will... tilt to his head. Or that kind of, if you see that look, that yeah. means you're, you know, you don't have long to live. Yeah, that tilt almost, you, you can tell he's going, I wonder what mm. you look like inside out. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what colour mm. your blood is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is your heart as big as his? <laughs> so I've now got a quote from Suetonius. Oh, sorry, were you about to say something? I was going to say, well, the other one, he, that's how I imagine... Um, Claudius looking like oh do you yeah. yeah like he looks you know a bit vacant eyes a bit spaced <laughs> out looking up yeah, yeah. eyes are slightly different directions not enough to really notice but if you yeah yeah just put it putting you off slightly mm. sorry Karen. okay so I've got a quote from Suetonius he was very tall in stature of pale complexion ill-shaped sunken eyes and hollow temples obviously this isn't matching up to no them. definitely because. <laughs> If you were making a marble bust of someone who looked like that and they had the power to kill you in horrific ways, you'd make a good marble bust, wouldn't you? You definitely would. Yeah. His hair thin and the crown of his head bald. The other parts of his body were hairy. On this account, it was reckoned a capital crime for anyone to look at him from above as he was passing by, or so much to name a goat. What? <laughs> yeah, it was a capital offence to mention goats around him. Do you have a fear of goats? I can only assume he looked a bit like a goat, and he thought that mentioning goats was uh, a, a reference to him. I've got to say, when I see the when I look at his busts, I don't um, get an image of a goat. No, I'm guessing these are very flattering busts. He's got more of a Hannibal Lecter style. Yeah, and he also had no hair on his head, but around the edge. And bearing in mind oh, he's in his twenties, just like Captain Picard from Star Trek: Next Generation. Wow, done. We were getting to the end there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I was worried. <laughs> okay, so, score for image of facio. Now, again, this is a very subjective round. We are looking, does he look like what we expect him to look like? But we've got this image and the description. I, I, I think he does look quite haunting. He does. It's, it's, I think it matches quite well, actually. Yeah, I think it matches quite well. And also, even though it's completely different, I think not having any hair in his head looking a bit like a goat and executing people who say goat because he's paranoid about his appearance really suits him yeah yeah it's almost like the one you know mine's got a sort of hair at the side and a bit well, that's when you were drawing it i thought oh it's probably quite accurate your little doodle there is probably more accurate than these marble busts the straight jacket the straight jacket and the umbrella yeah <laughs> yeah i'm gonna give him and the wellies now remember we give this out of 10 and then we divide by four our total I'm going to give it... Uh, I'm going to go for a six. A six out of ten. I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm yeah. going to go to seven because he's got that that realistic, cold, calculating... It genuinely looks like creepy. And I understand my, my opinion has been slightly skewed by all the horrific, disgusting things he's done. Yeah. Seven? Yeah, I'll give him seven. Okay, so if we put that through our calculator... Good calculator noises. That gives us a score of 3.25 
for Imago Facius, not Facio. No. Tempo completo. Okay, so now we go to our final round. Tempo completo. Tempo completo. Right, he reigned from 37 to 41. What? That's really short. Three years, ten months. That's a short, shocking round of terror, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it oh is. Oh, my goodness. Bearing in mind that by the end, everyone was saying, we need to get rid of him, this is awful. And for the first eight months or so, everyone loved him. So it was pretty much in three years he managed to get public opinion from you're our saving star to you are a madman, we need to kill you. So, not the longest of reigns. In fact, if that goes through our calculator, that gives him a score of a mere 0 0.48. 0 0.48. Four, eight. That is quite depressingly impressive. So that gives Caligula the grand total of 25.73. That's our lowest score. That is our lowest score. That is, which he probably deserves. For a lot of reasons. <laughs> but he does score highly on Opprobium Crasium. He's a, he's a winner up there, isn't he? He is. He's, yeah. a, he's the gold standard. Yeah. He so, deserves some sort of medal. Let's see if he has a certain je ne sais pas. Je ne sais pas. Do they have a certain je ne sais pas? I'm going to say yes. Are you? It's such a low score, but I don't think it needs to necessarily be about... Because if we just base it on scores, there should be a cut-off point. Absolutely agree. This isn't score. No. This is whether they have that certain thing that makes you think, yes, we need to learn about this person in history. Yes. And I think we need to know about Caligula. Yeah. In the same way that Augustus scored four marks in Successus Ultimus. Mm. And we said, yeah, he's got it. Yeah. Because he's so good at being successful. Yes. Caligula was top notch at being a mad, mad man. Yeah. Mad. mad he was just man. completely insane. So for that, I'm going to agree with you. I, yeah, I definitely think he deserves to have the he, he probably, I don't know, if, if we send lions in there, he'll sort of... Uh... Probably dress up some druids like lions and pretend. <laughs> Probably. I beat these lions! That's Jeff! <laughs> so at the moment, we now have Augustus and Caligula in the oh. Colosseum. Augustus probably stepping slyly away from Caligula. Well, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> this is who you're putting me with. <laughs> After all I did. But he's in there for his I, own reasons. Yeah, I mean... So well yeah. done, Caligula, for all your craziness. And sadisticness. Yes, you've, you've inspired many who yeah. are probably now either executed or in prison. Okay, so that was Caligula. You don't know who's coming next, do you? Um, I, I think I might have an idea, but... <laughs> oh, that cliffhanger. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? I don't know. We will find out next week. Oh, that's quite exciting. Okay, so all that is left to say is thank you very much to the Rex Factor. Yes. As Always. Yes, they've, they've certainly helped me with my teaching. Yeah. We're looking at Henry VIII, and it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. I'd also like to thank the Life of Caesar podcast this week, oh, because yes. they've um, been giving us some advice and some help as yeah. well on how to set up our podcast. And thank you to you, our listeners. Yeah. Uh, first time, I looking at all the statistics yeah. on our podcast hosting website, I get the feeling that those downloads aren't just us two checking if the links no, work. No, no, Because there are some from America. Yeah, I, I think Australia. we might even have an American fan. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so if it's you and you're listening, thank you very much. And I also think we may have one or two people listening from the UK. Oh. Yeah. So, if you are listening, leave us a review. Go yeah. on. And also a comment as well, you know. Yeah. We'll, we'll mention you in the next episode if you leave a comment. I'll yeah, we will. We'll read out your comments. We'll say your name. And if it's something entertaining, we'll laugh. And if it's sad, yeah. we'll cry. And, and we'll still read it out. But we'll... Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it will be great. It will be fun. It will be So awesome. leave us a review if you can. Join us on Facebook. Join us on WordPress. And Twitter as well. And oh, have we set up a Twitter yet? Uh, no. I keep saying that every week. <laughs> <laughs> you have one job. I'm sorry. We're doing all this research. Um, and very soon, like I stated last week as well, uh, this is a project ongoing. Uh, we'll be uploading our podcasts also to YouTube as well. We have a YouTube account with nothing on yet. Excellent. We'll be loading them up as a visual thing with the images going with the, the talking, which might help. Excellent. Okay. Until next week. Bye. Goodbye.
you scared of an army of shells? Hearing voices of ex-emperors? Are you convinced you're a god? Do you have brother-sister issues? Is your family dwindling in size due to your unrelenting murderous ambition? You definitely need a tinfoil hat! Comes in a variety of shapes and sizes to fit any head, no matter how mad. Simply wear the hat and fill your, your, your bad thoughts with me. <laughs> Warning, just because you are paranoid does not mean they're not after you. They are after you.